Hi, uh, this is Tim Shu from San Jose State University, and I'm here to talk about a big one, a tough one, the idea of the limit of a function. Uh, so uh, we'll start with the, the, talking about the purpose of defining the limit of the function. Why should we have this definition? Give some, look at some examples that motivate this, uh, and we'll, we'll give a, a sort of good enough definition of the limit of the function, the sequential definition of the limit of the function. Uh, we'll look at some examples of applying the sequential definition of the limit. And finally, we will briefly mention, but we won't really get into quite yet, the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function. Okay, so the, what is the purpose of defining the limit of a function? Well, suppose we have some function f of x that's defined for x near a, but not necessarily at a. So for some particular number l, suppose we have some other number l, and we would like to give a precise meaning and to know exactly what we're talking about when we talk about the idea that when as x approaches a with x not equal to a, then y equals f of x approaches l. That doesn't sound so bad, right? You know, x gets closer to a, y gets closer to l. Well, to see why this is not so straightforward, let's look at some examples. Okay, now we're switched over here, we're looking at a graphing program, and let's look at the example f of x equals sine x over x. Well, which is undefined at x equals 0, but if you look at the graph of f, and here's the graph of f here, we see that as x approaches 0 from either the negative side or the positive side, uh, the y value, the corresponding y value, approaches 1, so it appears that the limit of f of x, remember, which is sine of x over x, as x approaches 0 is 1. But how about this example? This is a very famous one. g of x equals the sine of 1 over x, also not defined at x equals 0. Well, if you graph that thing, it gets super wiggly. And if you think about it, if x, as x approaches 0 and is positive, 1 over x goes to infinity, uh, a positive infinity, and so you get this infinitely oscillating wiggle as x approaches 0. So the question is, um, if we're going to define what a limit is correctly, does g of x approach some value as x approaches 0? Does it approach lots of values? Does it approach none of them? Or how about this example? So this is similar looking, h of x equals x times the sine of 1 over x. Now this, you know, even though this has this infinitely wiggling behavior over here, I hope you can sort of see that the wiggles become smaller and smaller and smaller. It never quite just settles down and goes towards 0, the, the y values. But, you know, it seems like something's approaching, well, I don't know. I mean, so if you try to approach this kind of naively, just from just from just thinking about it off the top of your head, it sort of doesn't work. So to understand what's going on with these and other examples, we're going to need a more precise definition of limit. Okay, so uh, returning to the problem, our, remember our goal is to come up with a precise version of the vague idea that uh, as x approaches a, uh, f of x approaches l. So it turns out if we're just a little bit more careful of that, we can get a definition of the function, the limit of a function, that is relatively natural, it's not too crazy, but still nearly precise. So here is what we'll take as an operational definition of the limit of a function. So definition. Suppose f of x is a function that is defined for x near a, but it's not necessarily at x equals a. So to say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to l means that if x approaches a with x not equal to a, regardless of the way in which x approaches a, and that's the key sentence there, regardless of how x approaches a, then y equals f of x must approach l. So one point is that this definition is very close to our first sort of naive attempt, and the only uh, new feature is this second line that we have to, that y has to approach l no matter how x, x approaches a. This actually, as it turns out, this definition is not still not quite precise enough for proofs, which is in the end what you want def, a de, the limit of the, defin, the, de, the definition of the limit to be. But it's sort of close enough that you should be able to use this idea to figure out in practice whether a given function has a limit as a pre, x approaches a. All right, now going back to the uh, the graphing program here. Uh, so turning back to our first weird example, g of x equals sine of one over x. Um, if you look at what I, what we've drawn here. Um, here in red is the graph of sine of 1 over x, but and here in blue are some points in the, is a sequence of points in the curve where, where the x value is approaching 0, and here in green is a second sequence of points on the curve with x values approaching 0. And we see that over here, um, as x approaches 0, y approaches 1, and over here, as x approaches 0, y approaches negative 1, and so there, there's no way, there's some reasonable value of, of the limit of this red curve as x approaches 0 because um, there's no one particular number, single particular number that the y values must approach as x approaches 0. So uh, as we see here, g of x equals sine of 1 over x has no limit as x approaches 0. On the other hand, uh, if we look at this example, remember that we have this example h of x equals uh, x times the sine of 1 over x. 
Uh, and so we see over here that uh, at least in these two examples, you know, you, whether we have these blue parts uh, points here with x approaching zero or these green points over here with x approaching zero, either way, the corresponding y values do seem to approach zero. And it seems at least, though again, we haven't quite gotten this precise, it seems that as x approaches zero, y must approach zero no matter, because that happens no matter how x approaches zero. And so we can reasonably guess that the limit of h of x equals x times sine of one over x as x approaches zero is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, time for some real talk. Well, while you can't actually make that definition precise, and it does work very well in practice, for example, it actually takes a lot more time to make it precise enough for proofs, and that would take us sort of too far afield for a calculus class. Like I said, it still works for under understanding examples, though. So instead, we're going to use a version of the definition of limit, the limit that is very precise, though it's maybe not quite as natural as the sequential definition. So now we finally have the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function. So here goes. So to say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists some delta greater than zero, depending on epsilon, such that if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta and x is not equal to a, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. And of course, when you see this, I'm sure what you're going to say is, well, of course, that's perfectly natural. <laughs> No, of course, everybody sees that and they say, what the heck is that? Anyway, if you want to get, try to get some intuition about the epsilon delta definition, the limit of the function, uh, see if it, the next video in this, in this sequence explains one way to interpret that definition. However, if you just want to do problems, you can skip the intuition video and uh, just move on to the video about epsilonics, i.e. the craft of using the epsilon delta definition of the limit. So uh, onward. Thanks. Bye.